What's going on guys? So I am out here at Camper Clinic RV in Rockport, Texas, and we're gonna have a little bit different type of video today. So every time I post a video on RVs, I get people that either love them, I get people that are kind of you know, critical of them, or I get people that absolutely hate them, and they hate them for various reasons. Oftentimes it's something about the floor plan that they don't like. But then you get the few comments from folks that come on and simply call it junk, or they say, you know, would never buy Jayco because of this, or would never buy Montana because of that. And it makes me wonder what drives that mentality? What kind of drives that reaction? Is it an RVer who no longer RVs with that brand because they had significant problems? Did they have problems with the way the dealer treated them? Or did they have problems with the way the manufacturer treated them? I really wanna know and understand because if you say junk, um, for instance, when I do a Jayco video and they reference some quickly put together video that was criticizing Jayco and making some of their lighter, cheaper units and how they make them in such a short period of time, you know, and that's the reason why you're calling a $100,000 Pinnacle or a $80,000 North Point junk. I don't think that makes a lot of sense, considering the fact they're made by two entirely different crews at two entirely different factories. So considering all that, it's interesting for me to understand why people might hate a brand and love another brand or love a brand and hate one. And I'd really like to understand and learn from you all what drives some of those reactions. Now, if you don't like a certain brand because of a component they use, I can understand that. So for instance, if you're looking at a Montana, which uses rack and pinion slides, and then you look at a High Country, which is also the same brand, but a slightly lower cost version, which uses cable driven slides, you might say I like one brand versus the other because of that. But again, I don't think that equates to calling any of them junk. It's simply a choice in component. Some people have had really, really great success with a cable driven slide, and some people have had really, really great success with a rack and pinion slide. So it comes down to preference at that point. But specifically for those people who call a unit junk, why? And I bring this up because, let's say we're looking at this Montana High Country and we look at the suspension setup on this unit. You might say, well, I don't like this brand because of this specific specific brand of tire that they use. Even though that tire choice drives down the cost so they can put other stuff inside of the RV that you might really like. They have a higher end road armor suspension. They have the thicker shackle straps, greasable wet bolts. These are all things you may never see when you're looking at an RV, but can contribute to a much safer towing experience and they're thoughtful things that the manufacturers put in. But let's talk about junk again. A lot of people say, you know what, this brand or that brand is junk. What specifically are you pointing to to make that determination? We're gonna step inside of this relatively affordable Montana 377 FL to dive a little deeper. So looking at this unit inside, would you say it's junk because of the cabinetry? Would you say it's junk because of the refrigerator? What specifically makes people criticize RVs as just not being reliable or not being practical because of a construction technique. For instance, this backsplash. It's a nice backsplash. It's purely decorative. It's probably adhered to the wall with some type of a builder's glue, but could this potentially come off? Yes. Could this wall slightly flex while you're driving down the road? Yes. Could that be the reason this comes off? Potentially. Right, the solid surface countertops you have here. This is all constructed very similar to how it might be constructed in a home. But when you attach cabinets on walls and then you screw them down to the back, I mean, all of this stuff flexes when it's going down the road. So if you have a cabinet issue, if you have a piece of trim that comes off, does that categorize it in your mind as junk? Or in your mind, is it just viewed as that's just what happens when things move down the road and they flex? If you look at all the trim up here, it's all stapled in place and they have a lot of staples holding it in place. But these staples and tacks can flex because if this piece of trim is the exact length of the area that it's connected to, any flex at all is gonna push against this and want it to come off somewhere. So it can potentially come off on any RV. Larger crown molding, unless it's screwed into place and it's really adhered well, could deal with the same issue. I only bring this up because I wanna truly understand why some people view all RVs or even specific RVs as junk and do they truly understand how these things are built? 
do they truly understand what you have to understand when you take one of these down the road, when you're subjecting it to different types of conditions? If you look at all the staples that hold stuff like this in place, yes, they could have used screws. And I think that it probably would have been better if they used screws, but it would be a much larger hole to cover and it would take a lot longer to attach a lot of this stuff, which would slow the assembly line down. So would you be willing to pay 10, 15, 20% more for an RV just like this with a slightly different technique on how things are attached if it means that they can't produce as many, they can't get them to dealerships as quickly, and because of that, the cost has to go up significantly to justify the manufacturing costs, the, all the other components that go into getting an RV produced and out to a dealership. Would you justify paying significantly more for some of those different techniques if it meant that you don't have to potentially worry about trim falling down or things like that? I'd like to know your opinion on this because, again, every video I post on an RV, there's always somebody that posts junk or they say, you know, a piece of junk or this brand is junk. What specifically are you pointing to that makes you believe it's junk? Again, these are completely hand assembled. This isn't like your car where it goes down a robotic assembly line and everything has an exact spot to be bolted in and it's done by torque guns. It's done by a specific computer aided diagram that shows where everything goes. Everything in here was assembled by hand. Almost everything in here was built by hand. The components, the stoves, the microwaves, the refrigerators, they're manufacturers that supply these products to the RV industry, which then assembles it into an RV. The slide technology, that's not them, that's the manufacturer of that slide technology, whether it's you know a slide from Lippert or whether it's a slide from one of the competing brands. This is all stuff that just ends up being assembled in a factory. And the question is, would you rather them slow everything down to where instead of producing 14 units uh, a week, you'd rather them produce three units a week, maybe you can't get one, or if you do find one because they're producing such few, the cost of them is significantly higher to justify the smaller output in product that they're producing. Anyways, guys, I'd love to hear your opinion on this topic. Please leave a comment below. This is an important one for me because it helps me understand what you're looking for in RVs and if I can find one that can even fit that need and that niche of what you would consider to be high quality. Regardless of the brand you go with, you're gonna see the same components in almost all of them, and that's something you wanna keep in mind. Anyways, guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and let me walk to the back of this one real quick because it's kinda cool has a staircase that goes up to the top. Has a bunk up here. King size bed below. Can't imagine how loud it might be if you have kids running around up there. Good size bathroom, shower. It's a cool floor plan. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again very soon.